right, hello there, thrill seekers. And that was part of the intro to the song Free Will by Rush. And it's from the uh, Moving Pictures album, I believe. And uh, it's what I want to talk to you about today is free will. So let's jump right into it. So I got a question, another question about the matter of free will. Do we have free will or don't we have free will? And I feel like I've answered this question, or at least I've talked about this question a number of times recently, but it's an interesting question and people still keep asking it, so I'm going to still keep answering it. One of the first things to understand about the Buddhist approach to free will, which is something that I didn't really get myself until pretty recently, which makes me feel really dumb, is that when you want to talk about free will in a Buddhist context, you can't get away from talking about karma, aka cause and effect. And basically the idea is if karma is real, then there can't be any free will because every action is determined by something that happened in the past. And yet Buddhists insist on ethical principles which imply that we do have some kind of choice. And so as yet another way to answer this question of whether free will exists or not, I would like to read to you an excerpt from a book called Four Philosophies, One Reality. I guess it's not really a book, it's sort of a pamphlet that my teacher Gudo Wafu Nishijima put out. And part of this pamphlet is a speech and part of it is the Q&A that occurs after the speech. So this is in the Q&A section and somebody asks, I can never understand how, if you believe in cause and effect, aka karma, you can at the same time believe in human freedom. And Nishijima Roshi answers, to solve that problem you need to understand the Buddhist view of time. In Buddhist philosophy we think about time in two ways. In one way, we say that time forms a continuous line from past to future. So that's the normal way of understanding time. But at the same time, Buddhism is a very practical philosophy which is based on action. Action which takes place at the moment of the present. So even though we can imagine a long line of time from past to future, we believe that real time is just the moment of the present. Bing! This moment. This is the fundamental Buddhist theory about time. Buddhists believe in the rule of cause and effect. When we think of time as a long line, we can find the rule of cause and effect operating. But if we believe solely in the rule of cause and effect, we must become determinists, and that means there's no free will. We can never believe that human beings can be free. Buddhism also believes that the only real time is the present moment. This moment has no length. And in the present moment, with its zero length, we can find our freedom. A rather good simile is a pea balanced on a razor blade. Because the blade is very thin, the pea has an equal chance of falling to either side of the blade. Human freedom has the same basic character. Because our action is at the infinitely short moment of the present, it sometimes goes one way, sometimes the other. This is the Buddhist view of human freedom, and this theory allows us to reconcile the rule of cause and effect with belief in human freedom. In Western philosophical thought, belief in the rule of cause and effect does not allow for simultaneous belief in human freedom, and vice versa. So if you believe in cause and effect, you have to be a determinist, you can't believe in free will, or vice versa. This is a well-known and unresolved contradiction in Western philosophy. No one has found a solution to this problem through the thousands of years of philosophical development. But Buddhism has a theory which can reconcile these two, belief in cause and effect and belief in free will. So the Buddhist theory of time is very important. We call it the instantaneousness of the universe. Buddhist theory states that the universe appears and disappears at every moment. Time is fragmented or discontinuous. Only the moment of the present really exists, and it is this theory of time which allows the contradiction between free will and cause and effect to, to be resolved. And the questioner asks, if we believe in the instantaneousness of the present moment and we are acting sincerely, why is it necessary for us to believe in the rule of cause and effect? And Nishijima Roshi answers, it is because we have the ability to think about our predicament with our intellect. 
When we consider problems on the intellectual level, we must acknowledge that there is a law governing our actions, the rule of cause and effect. This rule enables us to understand and make sense of the real situations in our lives, but at the same time, this rule can never explain the whole story. We need to look at life from another point of view besides the deterministic point of view of causality. Buddhism encourages us to look at life and the way the universe works in many different ways. <laughs> Thank you, Ziggy. The rule of cause and effect is one of these ways, one way to explain the universe. I think that Zen is not definite about the validity of causal law. There is a part of the Shobo Genzo where a priest asks which is correct, causal law or freedom. And he's talking here about the famous fox koan. And if you go looking through old episodes of this YouTube channel, you'll find me doing one called the famous fox koan. And it's from about a year ago, I think. To fully understand the relationship between human freedom and the rule of cause and effect, we must use the theory of four views, subjective, objective, action, and reality, SOAR. From the first viewpoint, subjective, we can believe that human beings have complete freedom because this viewpoint looks at reality with the mind's powers. The second view, objective, is that the universe is governed by cause and effect because this view looks at reality from the external, objective, and material point of view. These two viewpoints, freedom and causality, are contradictory. To solve this contradiction, Buddhism has a third viewpoint, the philosophy of action. This is the philosophy of the present moment. The Buddhist theory of time states that the universe is instantaneous. This theory enables us to say both that we are free at the moment of the present and that we are bound by cause and effect. To realize these three viewpoints, we practice Zazen, because during Zazen, we can experience what reality is actually like by sitting quietly. There's your plug for Zazen. So to realize the validity of the theory of four views, we need to act, to experience something real. And practicing Zazen gives us this experience in a very simple and straightforward way. So now it is time to practice Zazen once again. Thank you. And I was at a lot of these lectures, not the particular ones that were recorded in the book, but many of Nishijima Roshi's lectures, and that's what he would do. He would, he would talk about stuff, and then we would go sit Zazen. So the Zazen is the answer, kind of, you know, that's, that's kind of what it comes down to, to this question. In the moment of the present, there is complete freedom, but complete freedom within the constraints that cause and effect has put you in. So you have freedom to do what you want, but that freedom is constrained by cause and effect, and there may be ways around this, and let me see if I can explain where I'm going with this. One of the answers that Nishijima Roshi liked to give about cause and effect and free will was, of course I have free will. If you sit a plate of food in front of me, I can eat it or not eat it, and I can eat it for a while and stop eating it in the middle if I want. And I used to think this was a dumb metaphor, but I think it's actually a really good one. It's what's, in, what's put in front of you is reality at this present moment, at this instantaneous present moment. And in that present moment, you have an opportunity to act. And you have freedom to act, but if we continue the metaphor of the food, if you have, you know, conditioned your mind to the point where I must eat everything that's on the plate in front of me, you know, for years and years, and you just go, well, 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 eat it, you'll never think, oh, I could stop in the middle of this. That takes a kind of a free point of view. And one of the things that Zazen allows you to do is to see the present moment unfolding as it is while doing nothing, basically, and see how much freedom you actually have. There's a tree bud that just <laughs> tried to hit my head, but it missed. So that's, uh, I don't know what that has to do with cause and effect and free will. So if, you, if you're if you a prisoner of your own conditioning, you'll never, <laughs> there's more flowers falling, you'll never even think of the other things that you might do. And there's certain freedoms which you'll never have. For example, I have a freedom to choose to believe in whatever religion I want. However, let's say there's a religion on planet Regizvan 22 out in the outer galaxies or wherever, you know. There's some other religion. I don't have a freedom to choose to be that religion because I don't have any opportunity to encounter it. So, so freedom is kind of 
free will exists, but in a limited manner. And the reason Buddhism always talks about ethics is because you should use that limited amount of freedom that you have in the best way possible. So there you go. That is one answer to the question of do we have free will or not. So remember that I will be in Europe next month, and here are the dates appearing on your screen. I will be in Finland, Germany, France, Belgium, and England. And if you go to the URL hardcorezen.info slash events, you can get clickable links to get info for all of those events. Or if you go down below here on this YouTube channel, you will also find those links. And if you want more things to link to, if you want to support this channel, you can send a donation by going to the URL hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is where you will find my PayPal and Patreon account links. And those are my main ways of making a living, my only ways of making a living most of the time. So I really appreciate your support, but as always, this is offered for free, so you don't got to support me if you don't want to. We will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Exercise your free will wisely. Hey Ziggy, what do you think of those beetles buzzing around? You don't like those beetles, huh? You're always barking at them and trying to catch them. But you haven't caught one yet. Anyway, they get drunk when they eat the figs, because the figs are, are kind of, uh, are they producing alcohol because they're fermenting. So that'll take care of the bugs. All right, Ziggy, see you later.